All right, so trying to just help anyone else that's having issues with their Cobra Max, like I am. Um, I have two things I'm trying to get dialed in. One, um, I've got some Y-axis shift, but save that for another time. And two is a uh, first layer uh, print. And um, I have two of these printers and both printers, um, I have not been able to get a very consistent um, first print layer. This, this what you're looking at here is probably the best uh, that I've gotten so far. And I just wanted to share uh, how I got here. So um, first and foremost, when you're building this thing and you're setting it up, um, you know, I, it doesn't feel to me and I, you know, I'm new to this, but it doesn't feel to me like it's vital that um, everything is like perfectly plumb and square, but you want to get it as close as you can. So um, the key things to look out for, I, I think, and you know, I could be wrong, is you want the, um, the gantry supports here to be square to the bed. You want um, the print head access to be parallel to the bed. And, um, and then you want everything to, um, all of the rollers uh, to be snug, uh, but not loose to where you can spin them by hand. So check all three rollers on uh, the print head, uh, the gantry, gantry both sides, um, and then there's six rollers underneath the bed. Um, if those rollers are over tightened, uh, they can cause too much, you know, extra stress on the motors. If they're too loose, then you're gonna get slop and you're gonna get play and you're never gonna get consistent prints. Um, the other thing, and probably the most important thing I'm learning here with what I'm doing is, um, is the print bed itself being level. And, um, when I first got this machine, if I took a straight edge and here, I'm just using a, um, you know, a, a ruler that came from a square. This is a 16 inch, uh, which is you know pretty much perfect for these machines. Uh, but if I sit this on the print bed, you can see that it is flat and flush all the way across and. The way that I've got this machine set up now, whether you go this way, this way, this way, wherever, um, it is flat. And not only is it flat, but if I take the print head off and I sit this flat, I can lower uh, the print head access onto the ruler and it is completely flat all the way across. Um, as it comes down and makes contact, it's consistent, it's even. Um, so that tells me it's parallel, um, you know, assuming this is, you know, even all the way across, which I think it is. So. Uh, if not good enough, um, it, you know, I think the key here is you don't want gaps that are thicker than a, a single layer of filament. If you have a gap that's thicker than a single layer of filament, uh, that means that, um, you know, it's either going to be too high or too low uh, on the first layer. And uh, these machines are supposed to have automatic bed leveling. It does not seem to be capable of solving that problem. Um, I've tried everything to adjust. Uh, the level sensor, you know, I do automation for a living. I understand how those sensors work. Um, the to either the tolerance is uh, not good enough on that sensor or there's something in the software that um, isn't making a good enough mesh for the machine to be able to, you know, compensate for a half a millimeter, a millimeter uh, or more of variation in bed level. So to get the bed flat, um, what I did is I installed uh, silicone spacers in place of the factory spacers. So if you look under the print, print bed, you're going to find these metal spacers. And I replaced them with these silicone ones. Um, I don't remember what the brand is, but they came from Amazon in a pack of 12 for, I think, 8 bucks. So they're a little bit uh, shorter than the original spacer, which um, I can't seem to find any reason why that would be a problem. Uh, if anything, you're going to get a couple extra millimeters of, um, of uh, height available to your prints, which, yay. Um, so the way that those get installed is you take the bed plate off, the PEI plate. You'll see uh, the eight screws here. So left, right, or left, right, and center. And um, one thing I'll note is that the spacers uh, that serve the center of the print bed... That is the spacer for the center. Um, one second. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is one of the spacers for the perimeter. So the spacers for the center of the print bed are a little bit longer than the perimeter. Um, so what I did is I just put all the silicone spacers in. They're all the same height, uh, which means that these spacers need to be tightened more than these spacers uh, to get 
um, you know, the same amount of pressure on the plate. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would uh, source or maybe even print a spacer that is the height difference between the perimeter and the center. And I would put that on the underside of the silicone um, furthest away from the bed. So the bottom of the silicone spacer, not the top. Uh, especially if you 3D print a spacer, if you put it on the top, that print will be in contact with a hot surface. Um, and I think over time it's gonna warp, it's gonna compress, it's gonna cause problems. But I think if you put it on the bottom, uh, it's got enough thermal separation with the silicone that it wouldn't be an issue. Um, so that's probably what I'm gonna do is just print uh, some simple uh, spacers that are whatever that thickness difference between these two are. Uh, to me, it looks like it's about a millimeter, maybe two. So once the silicone spacers are in, um, what I did with the bed plate off is I 3D printed an adapter for a really cheap dial indicator uh, that I have. Uh, this thing snaps right onto the side. Let me raise this up. I'm just raising this by pulling the belt on top. Uh, so this thing snaps right onto the side of the print head. And then what I did is I would lower this down to where the calip the gauge would spin a couple times, just making sure that I've got, you know, enough depth here that it never um, releases contact with the build plate, but not so much that it's, you know, a lot of friction and what have you. Uh, then what I did is I zeroed it just by spinning the, spinning the guy here. And I moved this thing all along the print bed. And I started in the center and I moved the print bed between the two center screws and I would tighten those screws to where they were firm, um, but I got consistent pressure from one to the other. And then as I did, got two screws down, and you know, at this point, these two screws were dialed in and firm, but I also hand tightened to a what I felt like was a firm enough that it won't back itself out, um, but not so firm that I'm really trying to warp the bed or anything like that. So I tightened all the screws in that fashion um, but then once they were all tight, I would either, you know, if I'm, if I'm low over here, I would back the screw out just a hair. Uh, if I was high, I would tighten the screw down a little extra. So like if I was moving from here to here and I saw my dial indicator, um, show me that that area was higher, this area, then I just tighten that screw down a little bit more. Um, and as you're moving it around, that's, that's what you're looking for. So if I slid it over to here and this was getting raised up, then I want to tighten this screw down more. Um, and then vice versa. If this was coming down, then I want to back this screw, screw up. So that was the first step for me, um, was the dial indicator. And it, I got it pretty good. It's not perfect, as you can see, as it moves around. Whoop, shoot. Um, as it moves around, there are variations, but it seems to be, you know, about five thou difference which um, I haven't done the math on that, but I think that's less than the thickness of the first layer. So I think that's probably got us in the ballpark close enough. So once that part's done, it's time to put the build plate back on. And I've been using this test print, which puts a first layer on top of the screw locations with a couple of extra circles in the middle front, middle back, which just helps you understand where your peaks and valleys are. So with this print, um, uh, I'm doing more fine tuning. So what I'm doing now is um, after I leveled the bed, it was okay, but still with just adjusting Z height alone, I wasn't able to get consistent. Some of the squares were uh, smushing the filament too much. They were flattening and they were creating um, you know, uh, pits uh, and some of them were too high and so they would look stringy and the lines that were the filler uh, They were actually disconnected. So if you go to peel the print off you would um, you know, you would see on, second. You would see that uh, you could actually peel the squares apart um, Which tells you that it's too high. So uh, from this point forward what I was doing is printing this um, I was uh, getting to a point where I started to see one square way off from another. As soon as I saw that, I would stop the print. Um, and I would take the, um, you know, the, 
if it was a low spot and it was already a pretty well tensioned screw, I would back it out just a hair. Uh, and if it was a high spot and and it wasn't overly tensioned already, and when I say overly tensioned, you, it, it's going to be a feel thing, um, I would tighten that screw down a little bit more. So I was doing my fine adjustment here, regardless of tools and measurements, just based on the quality of the print. And um, and this is where I'm at so far, and I think it's pretty good. And, and also, as the print improves, um, I've been able to pull this thing off, even with a hot bed plate, using nothing more than just a little... 3D printed scraper, which if if you haven't printed any of these yet, these things are amazing. I, these are the bamboo ones on printables. Uh, by the way, this if you just search Cobra 2 Max um, bed on printables, you're going to see this print. It'll come right up um, with instructions that are pretty decent. They got me going. Uh, but these things are awesome for being able to get prints off your bed. Um, I would print a whole batch of these things because they don't last very long, but you know, Hell yeah. And what's great about them too is they don't leave any residue behind because you plastic on glass. Whereas when you're scratching with your fingernails in your hands, you're putting oil on the print bed, which can affect the um, ability for the first layer to stick. And, and if you don't have it already, get yourself a spray bottle and put some 91% alcohol in it and just spray the print bed every single print and give it one wipe down. Um, it's a godsend. So that is how I'm dealing with trying to level the print bed. Um, so far, it's working great. Um, we'll see if the prints consistently stay good. I'm pretty confident at this point, though. I've got this leveled in enough that I'm going to start getting much higher quality prints out of this machine. Um, I do also have on this particular machine, so I have two of these. Uh, this machine is having issues with Y-axis shifting during prints. So um, I think I've got... Uh, something somewhere hang tight so you've probably seen prints like this where the layers are shifted and um, yeah so having issues with that with this machine um, not having it with my other machine my theory is that it is um, something to do with the rear stepper motor um, I got a good tip on that though that I think is worth sharing and basically what I did is if I pull the bed all the way forward um, Or I'm sorry not pull it all the way forward, but if I um, if I home everything and then Use the little menu there to push the bed all the way forward um, I drew some lines with some paint markers across the belt uh, the pulley and the shaft and this is going to help me know with confidence uh, on both sides um, is the belt slipping? Uh, because if the belt is slipping, then this line at some point will no longer be aligned with that line. Um, or is the pulley shifting? And if that's the case, then this line will no longer be in alignment with that line. Um, or is the motor having issue? And if the motor's having issue, I would expect that these lines are always in alignment, but that I'm still getting layer shift. So that's where you have to either, I think, dial in your acceleration uh, or it just could be potentially a bad stepper motor. Um, I did see here on the Facebook group that um, somebody had a stepper motor where he, um, with, with the motor on and, and torque applied, was able to rotate the shaft, um, meaning that the shaft uh, is no longer connected to the, um, to the stator inside of the stepper motor. Uh, so if that's the problem, it sucks, but... I, have heard nothing but good things about any cubic and their willingness to send parts. So, um, so I'm confident that they'll send me a stepper motor and, you know, worst case scenario, uh, I don't believe, I don't, I haven't looked it up yet. I don't believe that stepper motor would be very expensive. Typically these machines are built with, uh, array of parts that are pretty damn inexpensive. It's the only way they're making money selling these things. So, um, Hope this helps someone else. And if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask. Um, I'll do my best to respond and, and help you guys out if I can. And um, good luck out there.